Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This is our 17th day of Podmas where we're putting out an episode every day in the lead up to Christmas. Today we have Netflix 285th film from 2020. It's the Italian horror called The Binding or Il Lagame. It's directed by Domenico DeFudis and stars Riccardo Scamaccio, Michael C. Puzzuto, and Federica Rossellini. I'm Jesse. I'm your host. Welcome. If, uh, as always, if this is a film that you're keen on checking out, haven't quite seen, give us a pause and come back later on because we're going to spoil this film. This is definitely not a uh, Christmas type of film. This is a horror film. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get to it as we talk. We do start the show off with the fast flicks where we do a quick little summary of what the film is all about. So this one's about a man who takes his fiance and her daughter to meet his mother. But some old family secrets are revealed. <sighs> Ooh, intriguing, intriguing. Hopefully that's intrigued you enough to continue and listen to what I've got to say. Uh, as always, we like to talk about how a film ended up on Netflix. This one, an international film, very hard to find anything out. So apparently this film's based on real events, true events. It's it's the binding. It's about a uh, possession type of thing. The production for this film, it took place in September and October of 2019 in Apulia, which is in southern Italy, between the village of Selva di Fasino and Monopoli, Monopoli, uh, not Monopoly, Monopoli, uh, which is a part of the metropolitan city of Bari. So that's where it was filmed. There is text at the start of this film on the screen, which sort of gives the audience uh, some information and tries to explain everything about what the binding actually is. So according to the film, binding indicates a psychic condition of impediment or inhibition and a sense of domination determined by a powerful malign, malign influence, which affects a person's autonomy and capacity to decide and choose. Binding, commonly known as the evil eye, is carried out through magic rituals that establish the binding between victim and practitioner. Okay, so apparently this is all sort of uh, superstition and stuff from the southern part of Italy where it's filmed as well. So obviously, um, probably a story that's uh, quite familiar to people from that part of the world. Across the world, what is this called? So the direct Italian translation of Il Legame, it's the link, it means the link. So similar to the binding, but a link between the two people. It's the same in Spanish. In uh, Portuguese, it's called the fascination. Interesting. Uh, French, it's called the cursed link. So that makes sense as well. In Greek, it's called the shackles. Get that, that's good. Hungarian and Slovak, it's called the Curse of the South, so it ties it into the location of, of where we are in Italy. In Norwegian, it's called the Tape. Um, I guess that's that idea of a binding tape. Um, probably not a great translation. In Polish, it's called Bond. Get that. Romanian, Covenant. Um, interesting. <laughs> Russian, it's called Sinister Connection. Turkish, it's called Cursed Bond. So all, all playing that idea of a bonding or, or something coming together. This was released on Netflix on the 2nd of October of 2020. What are the critics and audiences saying about this film? On Rotten Tomatoes, it's only got three reviews. They're all rotten, so no percentage overall. The audience has it very low, however. It's at 20%, that's on more than 50 ratings. IMDb, it's also fairly low on that scale out of 10. It sits at a 4.8 on a bit over 4,500 ratings. Letterboxd, low again, 2.3 out of five on 3,500 ratings. It's been logged by nearly 5,000 people though. So again, with these international films that we're getting through at this Christmas time, not a lot of people have seen these films, um, and I'm putting myself through it and doing it. So what are my early thoughts of this film? I think, you know, the performances, they're okay. The film, it looks good at times. Uh, it's just everything else that lets this film down. It doesn't have the tension that you need to make this film really effective. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's through some of the characters, which we'll talk about now, I guess, because we, we talk about Francesco. This is the guy that um, is taking Emma, his, his love partner, to his home village to meet his mother bringing along her daughter who um, Francesco gets along really well with, is like a mentor to her, you know, stepped in really nicely to that um, male role model role. And he's obviously got this deep connection with his family, especially his mother. Um, he's good at playing the piano, and that's another thing that he connects with Sophia, um, Emma's daughter, on as well. If we talk about Emma, his uh, partner, this, this daughter, Sophia, that she's got, it's from a previous relationship. She's still on good terms with her dad, so, you know, she doesn't see Francesco as a replacement dad. But she is happy with Francesco and how well he gets along with her daughter too. She seems like a workaholic, someone that doesn't question or, or have beliefs in anything that she can't physically put her own mind to or hand to. And, and you know, apparently she works in real estate. So switched on, smart, but focused on work. So very hard to focus on anything else or see the, the clues that are around about what's happening to her daughter or at this location. Uh, Sophia, the daughter that we spoke about, 
She seems to have no issues with Francesco being around. They get along well, like I've mentioned, like that idea through the piano. She sort of is the innocent one of this film. Um, literally has a demon put on her for, not, for, for no reason other than uh, Francesco, really. It's not her fault. She's the innocence in this film. She likes to play with the, the family dog, those types of things, and likes to explore as a child too. Uh, at the house, we've got Sabrina, who's the housemaid, and then the other big character there is... Teresa, who's Francesco's mother. That's why we're here. That's why the characters have come, so that they can be introduced to her. She's obviously got concerns with Emma and her ability to mother due to her work. Uh, she thinks that kids need stability, so she's looking out for Sophia. But obviously, she's the one that recognizes that there's this demon in the house, I guess, and, and she can do magic with herbs and things like that. So a part of the family tradition, I guess. And this, all, and this is obviously a big spoiler alert, all about this uh, chick called Ada, who Francesco was meant to marry at some stage. Um, she worked at the home. He got her pregnant. Uh, she lost the baby. She went crazy. <laughs> Realistically, this this it was all Francesco's fault, as we we see throughout this film, because he thought he wasn't ready to have a child, so he cursed her, and, and all of these issues are based on Ada being the demon and being cursed because of Francesco not being able to to deal with with his choices or his actions as well. I guess um, the director Dom Domenico De Fudis, This is his feature debut. Only two shorts before this. Uh, I can't see a lot more work going his way, to be honest. Uh, let's talk about some scenes. What did I like? What didn't I like? Really hard to... Act. It's a short film. There's, there's not a lot I can really talk about. There's this scene where um, the daughter, Sophia, goes out to the forest, and there's all these trees that have been unrooted. They're all fallen down. That looked really cool. I like the visuals of that. The visuals in this aren't too bad. Um, the, the other visual I like in this, the, fin the final credits, they have all these images of um, people that looked like they were possessed as the credits rolled. These were, like, my question was, were these real? Like, what are these images from? Are they from the story that inspired this film? I'm not sure, but they were probably the scariest thing in this film, to be honest. Uh, what are some things that I didn't like in this film? I think we've got Emma down in the cellar, um, and she finds these envelopes. You know, it's just to waste time. Um, but she finds, finds these envelopes, which reveal Francesca was meant to get married, and this is that clue about Ada, in 1980. Weird. 1980, this film's from 2020. Um... Uh, was he, you know, he must be 70. Like, it didn't feel like this film was only, you know, was set in the early or late 90s. That was just a weird sort of um, date to choose, I think. The other thing is they go to, let's, um, Sophia gets bitten by this spider and they do end up going to a doctor. Uh, just that whole visit to the doctor seemed completely pointless. Unless it was trying to insinuate that he's in on the family and their rituals and the whole idea that the society down there believes in these, these rituals just felt like a pointless um, part of the film. Themes, ideas, what's this film trying to say? So obviously the idea of a mother's love, that idea, it's unbreakable. Um, whether that's for a daughter um, or whether that's for a son as well, that is unbreakable. And that idea of family too, that family comes with good and with evil too. And, and that idea too, I guess, in this part of the world that faith can protect, believing in faith can help you get through situations. Um, what did I take away from this film? The, the amount of wandering of characters, just walking around pointlessly, aimlessly, it was mindless walking around without a reason. It was just boring, um, it's, especially in such a short film. I'm not sure, like, obviously they, they wanted to pad up time and space because that was, to me, kind of pointless. What are some questions and ponderings about this film? I think the whole process of that binding, apart from that text at the start of the film, it was just poorly explained, really. Like, the actual physical weight, like, I get the background behind it, but the physicality of it, it was just poorly explained. I think that was... You know, that's the, the title of this film. You've got to actually make it seem believable and that, that's something that characters would fear. I just didn't get that whole thing. And I think the idea too, it's heavily implied, but at the end of the, the film, Teresa, Francesco's mum, performs another ritual. And I think this is in order to bring Francesco back to life. And we obviously get that shot of him sort of arising too. And that idea that he's possibly binding with Sophia. I guess that's what you're supposed to take out of it. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, let's wrap this up. I haven't got much more to say. I think that, you know, we give films rating out of five for me. Horror films, they work on suspense and scares, and this doesn't have any, uh, unfortunately. So the lore of this film, too, I think it's poorly explained, and it's just not interesting enough. Uh, give this a miss. I'm giving this a one and a half out of five. Pretty low for me. We're on socials. We've got Instagram. We've got Facebook and X, formerly known as Twitter. The question, and this is to do with Sophia and what was going on under her bed, but did you ever think that you had monsters under your bed when you were a kid? Um, I was lucky. I had like a trundle mattress underneath my bed. So uh, nothing that I, I didn't really scare. Maybe the cupboard more so than under the bed. So that, that's an interesting question. Did you did you fear monsters under your bed? We're back tomorrow. We're back tomorrow. We're kicking on, getting closer to Christmas tomorrow. We've got the 2020 comedy horror called Vampires vs. the Bronx. This one's directed by Oz Rodriguez and stars Jaden Michael, Gerald W. Jones III, 
Gregory Diaz the fourth, Sarah Gadon, Method Man, Shay Wiggum, and Coco Jones. Get excited! I'm excited for that one. That should be a, a bit of a swing up. I guess it's still got that horror comedy, but a uh, horror idea, but some comedy too. That'll be nice. I'll see you tomorrow.